surprise. The history of science is full of surprise. In our last video, we talked about Copernicus and Galileo, how they overhauled the paradigm of a geocentric universe with a heliocentric one. Then we talked about Pasteur, who discovered microorganisms and that disease could actually be caused by things we can't even see with our own uh, naked eyes. And then we also talked about the nature of the atom. When Rutherford did his experiment in 19, in the early 1910s and published in 1911 about the gold foil experiment, he shot uh, uh, alpha particles at gold foil and found that a small percentage of them deflected almost all the way 180 degrees. And it was a complete shock. And the model that he developed is still shocking when you think about it. So what he developed was a model of uh, an atom that had mostly electron cloud with a very, very small dense nucleus. Let me give you a, a picture of what this is, and it's shocking even to talk about it. So if you were to picture an atom, the size of an atom as a uh, football stadium. So imagine like all the, the stands and the seats all around the football stadium as the electron cloud, and also much of the field as the electron cloud. It turns out the size of the nucleus, which we know is where almost all of the matter and the mass of an, of, of an atom is, would be the size of an ant in the middle, a small ant in the middle of the football field. That model is just shocking. Why would it be that way that things hard like metal pens and plastic and even paper, why would it be that most of that matter is almost infinitesimally small. It's, it's uh, almost unthinkable. So that's the nature of matter. And uh, Einstein, another surprise, came in 1905 when he published his theory of special relativity. And he found that the only constant in our universe is light, which has incredible implications, which I'll get to later. But who would have thought that velocity, space, time, and even matter, mass itself, not matter, but mass itself is relative. The measurement of it is all relative to the speed at which you were traveling. What a crazy concept that something would be more massive if it's traveling faster, but that has been validated over and over and over by scientists. What a surprise. Then Einstein published in 1915 his theory of general relativity, which overhauled Newton's uh, theory of gravity. And now Einstein discovered that space and time are a grid intricately related and matter, mass, like the sun, bends space and time, which is what's causing gravity. It's totally a surprise.